everyone, wherever you are sitting, standing, and hanging out, listening to our Lumbung Calling. Welcome you all to the seventh episode of Lumbung Calling, a conversation series part of Documenta 15's public program named Meida. Today, the Lumbung Calling focus on regeneration, and we are very happy and glad to host Gulnara Kasmalieva and Muradbek Jumalif, an artistic duo based in Bishkek, and Arafat Sadala, a Moroccan researcher in philosophy. And my co-host Jumana will introduce briefly Gulnara, Muradbek, and Arafat later. My name is Mirwan Andan, and I'm part of Ruang Rupa, a collective based in Indonesia. As you might know, we have been invited to work on Documenta 15. Documenta 15 will be open on June 18, 2022 but various initiatives have already been launched. Although some of you might be familiar with Lumbung Coding, as we already have had six episodes, let me briefly explain further what this program consists of. Lumbung Coding is a collection of conversations with a variety of guests exploring Lumbung from a variety of contexts, angles, and perspectives. And, and it will take place on the first Saturday of every month from April until October 2021, this month. But what exactly do we mean by Lumbung? Lumbung can be defined as a container to store agricultural products, commonly rice, in the form of a house on steel with walls of woven wood or bamboo. In Indonesia, it is quite common to see these buildings similar to a barn. However, Lumbung goes beyond its physical presence. This term can indeed be used to describe shared collective resources. It can also be viewed as a collection of principles and cosmology that describe daily life, common sharing, and community as a potential activity. In, or it means that Lumbung can be a hardware, and at the same time, it's also a software. Lumbung calling, the name of this program, it is a call to our social attitudes, and it's intended to raise consciousness about the practice of Lumbung or sharing in many corners of the world. Each edition of the series is dedicated to one of the Lumbung values. The first focus on local anchor, we investigated with our guests Melanie Budianta and Armin Salasa, the roots of sharing, the diversity in collaborative practices in various contexts from the remote countryside to the hectic and hustle bustle city life. The second Lumbung calling posts attention on humor with guests Gerditya Gawiwong and Surab Parke where we discuss how humor can trigger and expand our approach, especially in an artistic context. The third Lumbung calling confers about independence on relation between humans and other than humans weave independence and interdependence together with guests Tanya Bruguera from Havana, Cuba and Omar Tesdale from Palestine. Here I started again. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I mentioned that uh, the third Lumbung calling uh, confers about independence on relation between human and other than humans. Weave independence and interdependence together with guests Tanya Bruguera and Omar Tesdale. The fourth Lumbung calling hosted Yasmin at Sabah and Mahmoud Afe in conversing about generosity on the willingness to give as a vital act in any ecosystem building processes. The conversation on generosity also mentioned about the firm challenges about against competition, rivalry, and rarity. <laughs> the capitalist challenges that define our contemporary life. The fifth Lumbung, Lumbung calling converse with Erika Malumino and Shahidul Alam on the value of transparency. During the conversation, it demonstrates how various levels of transparency have a role in determining Lumbung values and establishing healthy ecosystem. Last month, the sixth Lumbung Calling hosted Paula Fleischner from Argentina and Christopher Cozier from Trinidad and Tobago to converse about sufficiency, where we explore the limits of sufficiency. When do we say enough is enough? How can these limits be pushed? Who or what defines them? As you have witnessed, our guests come from a diversified panorama, educators, academics, cultural leaders, independent scholars, organic producers, political activists, 
festival organizer, we invite them to address challenges they face and discuss with us how they implement the changes on different scales. I couldn't have wished for a more perfect co-host, the artist Jumana Emil Abuts. Jumana's creative practice engage with oral histories and with personal and collective mythologies, drawing on the tradition of Palestinian folklore and its integrated practice with land and water, with human and non-human. Jumana is currently pursuing a practice-led PhD at the Sled School of Fine Art, University College London. I thank you all in advance for your attention, and I give a warm welcome to Jumana, who will introduce you further to today's Lumbung Calling on Regeneration. Please note that the conversation will last around an hour and a half. You can watch this program live via tv.lumbung.space and via D15 YouTube channel and through D15 Facebook page, as well as the D15 YouTube chat and through D15 Facebook page, it is indeed possible to ask questions that will be selected and shared with our guests. Please note that this event will stay online afterwards with the addition of subtitles. Jumana. Thank you, Andan. Welcome, everyone. Within the framework of Documenta 15, Regeneration is explored as a way of living and organizing oneself and communities in opposition to extractive practices. This approach also includes generating time and space for mutual support and reflection. It centers care, often made invisible, as a vital part of political activism, enabling the incorporation of many viewpoints within a larger ecosystem. This edition of Lumbung Calling imagines regeneration as an act of making kin with our predecessors and future generations. It also examines regeneration as a means of valuing material resources as something to be shared and reused rather than accumulated. Moroccan philosopher Arafat Saadallah looks at the conditions and legacies of revolutions as well as intergenerational ties in his work with Siwa platform in Radaif, Tunisia. Artist Gulnara Kasmalieva and Muratbek Jumaliev address the afterlives of Perestroika in the context of Kyrgyzstan and how young generations continue narratives of resistance and history making while forming new ones. Arafat Saadallah is a Moroccan researcher in philosophy based in France. His research approaches the concept of representation in Arab art as, as, thought and possibility of as thought and possibility of translating representations, aesthetic and cognitive modalities between worlds and between cultures. Saadallah is a curator and member of Siwa Platform. It's a space for artistic and civic experimentation, which tries to nurture and inhabit many spaces such as Lea Konomat at Ridaif in the south of Tunisia. And it tries to set up an alternative network for thinking, creating, and translating. Saadallah is also a member of Ixile ES, which is a collective of artists and researchers working on questions of exile and alienation. Gulnara Kasmalieva and Muratbek Jumoleev are an art artistic duo based in Bishkek. They accessed, international, um, they, they accessed international ideas when studying in Russia during the period of perestroika, which was between 1985 and 1991. Returning to Bishkek, they experimented with video and photography to create unprecedented representation of Kyrgyzstan's passage to independence and the impact of Soviet-era legacies on life and on identity. Kasmalieva and Jumaliev are active as curators and leaders with mission to stimulate the next generation. They founded a school for young Bishkek artists operating through Art East, a nonprofit art center that they also established. And they've curated regional and international exhibitions, taught courses in contemporary theory and practice, organized workshops, provided networking, and launched collaborations to connect young artists with other artists and with curators, critics in different contexts. Their most recent project, 
is the establishment of an art residency in a remote village in Kyrgyzstan, which is focused on eco building, prima culture, and collaboration of artists, activists with the local community. So it's my pleasure to first introduce Gulnara and Muratbek, and maybe we can hear from you uh, more about um, the establishment of the art residency and further projects that you're undergoing. Oh, thank you, Jumana. We would like to express our gratitude to Andan, Arafat, Kasia, Kiara, and to all with whom we prepare this conversation about regeneration. When we hear the word uh, regeneration, the first meaning of the word came to our mind from biological sphere. When some species in our planet could repair some of their parts from damage or loss, the same concerns to more complex ecosystems and also in cases of cultural, political and social transformations. In this case, we would like to begin to talk about the certain time between 1985 and 1991. These six years of so-called perestroika in Soviet Union could be perceived as a unique time of renewal. Actually, the word perestroika literally translated from Russian as rebuilding. At the time, we were students at the Art Academy in Moscow and St. Petersburg and later in Tallinn. We witnessed a unique time when being still in the Soviet system, there were democratic stiff shifts towards human rights as freedom of speech, freedom of movement and many other rights. We think even now when we live in Central Asia in so-called liberal social societies, we have less possibilities in terms of human rights than it was during the perestroika. It was time when the society began freely talk and publish about Gulag, time of many unique cultural events, exhibitions when reflected underground culture went public. It was so also time of revival of nation identity of all 15 republics and ethnic uh, minorities and many problems hidden during 70 years of Soviet regime became obvious. This melting pot of rethinking, renewal, regeneration during these six years became for us source of energy for further decades of our life. Collapse of Soviet Union in 1991, continued by the chaos of economic mass migration, poverty, collapse of the system of free education and free medical care and many other kinds of social supports. Beginning of uh, 90s was time of total confusion because it was a feeling that nobody, including government, does not really know where we should go. We began to live in a completely different paradigm of unknown wild capitalism, art and culture were not supported as in previous time. For us, it was not only time of survival, but also possibility to express ourselves in experiments with different forms. At that time, we began to work in photographs, video installations. And uh, please, the first slide. Uh, on the picture, is uh, one of our work we made in reflection and poetic interpretation of the time. This bag's completely known for everyone because a symbols of so-called transitive period in post-communist countries. Uh, remarkably, these bags were carried by women who took responsibility for their families in this particular time. Teachers, doctors, musicians, uh, cultural workers, scientists, and many other women workers who became unwanted for the society began to be so-called shuttles. Shuttles because they were always in between of two destinations, place where they buy some goods, mostly in China, and place where they could sell it in a huge continent of Eurasia. They became pioneers of building unknown neoliberal kingdom of free market. 
market was everywhere and these bags were kind of bricks of new building. For us, uh, these bags were consisted to not goods, but uh, destinies, desires, desperations, inspirations, hopes. What is time of regeneration? That is a big question. Uh, one might say, it, yes, it was regen regeneration because we gained G in independence, national identity, rebuilt economy. We have access to world cultural through mobility. But another good answer, poverty, corruption, inequality, political persecution, ecological crisis, and mass migration of deprived. What, that's what we strived for. These and many other questions could be reflected in art, and we try to do it. We also understand that we need to build a new community of contemporary art. Uh, that's why uh, we began our school for contemporary artists, alternative for official conversation con and uh, conservative art academies. It was uh, important to build this school in principles of horizontal relationship, friendly atmosphere and collectivism. Uh, we built kind of cultural uh, and the uh, curricula were theoretical parts uh, combined with practical ones. It was crazy idea to reach a <laughs> bachelor degree in one year. Uh, the most important thing in our school was the round table discussions we held after individual stu uh, student presentations. We discussed 20th century art history in order to have some knowledge, not only about names, events, movements, and media, but also to have the ability to think through certain historical context. Everybody had uh, the possibility to interact. We remember how students were inspired by 7,000 Oaks action by Joseph Boyce. And immediately together with students, we decided to make a trash festival, the most crowded and polluted area of Bishkek Osh Bazar. Please, second slide. Osh Bazar in Bishkek located by the river Alarcha, and at the time, sellers on green market, they usually throw now their spoiled vegetables and fruits directly into the river. This place near the bridge became like a mound of garbage. When the students began to work in this project, one of the students, Nelly Jamanbava, made local administration to clean up this place because it was actually their duty. After the many times of demands, administration finally decided to remove tons of garbage from the river. Please, next image. Uh, the festival became students' collective diploma work. Students fundraised, managed, curated, and made site-specific works. One of the work you see in this image is graffiti on the concrete wall made by Dmitry Petrovsky. This colored image of paper-made ships stuck in front of the place where used to be mount of garbage. Next, please. Uh, the central figure of the festival became a dragon, symbol of the ra uh, river uh, made by Bermet Borubaeva. It was made by plastic bottles found, found right there and connected by the tapes, together with funny slogans in their hands and chanting the demands of, clean, of a clean bazaar, students uh, marches in noisy procession along the market. Next, please. This kind of carnival parade was quite natural for Bazaar with its own ecosystem where people not only sell and buy, but also interact, share political news. It is usual place for performance of blind musicians, poets, singers. It was only one day festival and we remember when we came back next day with the students, we witnessed an interesting scene. An old woman 
who is probably a market sailor to, to a young boy about the festival and how it is important not to pollute the river. Another trash festival, Make a Forest, was two years later in front of the National Museum of Fine Art. Curators and uh, participants of the festival was our school collective and it was uh, questioning about deforestation. Bishkek city used to be one of the greeting, greenest cities in Soviet Union. Mass trees cutting in the city began in capitalistic time with privatization of some green zones and later with extensions of the roads due to normal no numbers of cars. And the third trash festival was held just uh, recently and it was part of activity of newborn platform of Bishkek School of Contemporary Art. This platform created by the former students of Artist School and it opens new opportunities in the art production process of self-organization of self-organizing artists. Uh, this platform works on the principle of secular, sec circulation, accumulation, formation of knowledge about art, creation of a space for communication, interchange and possible but not necessarily will contribute to the development of methodological and theoretical basis, the creation of archival space and practices for the implementation of contemporary art in Kyrgyzstan and beyond. We just could add that the platform of Bishkek School of Contemporary Art just recently joined educational program of Good School. Please, next image. Uh, this year, artists and activists choose location around Bishkek city dump. Bishkek air was almost permanently ranked to as first polluted in the world. Stinking a landfill, smoke, agricultural land polluted by production, hypermotorization and many other problems of the city affected the health and lives of people. Artists began to work in district Alten Kazik located near to the city dump within 30 mi minutes by car from the city center. Almost all community of the district engaged somehow in the city dump. No clean water, no good air, no cultural conditions there, no libraries, no good education in kindergartens. Please, next. There is a big difference between two worlds Bishkek city and this district near Behenf, a landfill. That is why research of the art festival trash dedicated to problems of environmental inequality and aimed to create a dialogue on solving the issue of environmental pollution in the city. Next, please. One of the important things was opening of the library of saved books that was built after discussion with local residents. Artists rented a small shop for affordable price to create a local community center for kids, where they can play, make art, read books, have lectures or courses. Now this spot is a window between two worlds of crucial inequality where artists and activists started a dialogue and collective creativity. Please, next image. Uh, now the first question for art collectives is how the space can sustain and prolong its work independently. Also, it is important that local people help in organizing the center and generate their own agenda. This image of children sitting around the table drawing and sharing colors and pencils among each other in front of constantly smoked rubbish dump. This image could be our last example of regeneration. Regeneration with a whole mixture of loss, survival, struggle and hope. Thank you. Uh, that's all maybe that can I just talk.
talk. Thank you, Gangnara. Thank you so much. I, I believe, I mean, you've given us a beautiful idea of the, yeah, of the history and the foundation um, of your work. And you've walked us through Bishkek, so we really appreciate that. I think we will come back uh, for sure to hear and understand more about your experience. But right now, I would like to make the connection between your work and uh, the work of uh, Arafat, our um, second guest speaker for today. And I believe that um, Arafat, if you can also share with us your experiences, specifically connected with regeneration and with how you're, I suppose, linking the past and trying to uh, let go of the past, but at the same time to learn from it in order to re regenerate. Thank you, thank you, Jumana. Thank you, and then I want to thank uh, everybody in uh, Lumbung, Colin, Kia, Kasha, and all the technical uh, team. And uh, yeah, to get back to your question, Jumana, I think that it's uh, very important. Uh, question and problematic on uh, theoretical and practical side. I mean, for us, the, as in CIWA platform, the platform where I am uh, uh, mostly active and uh, also uh, uh, working a lot on, on the project that I'm participating with in, in, uh, in uh, Documenta 15. With, uh, uh, so for this, uh, uh, for Siwa, it was a real question uh, to connect uh, the past to the future related to this term, related to this concept of uh, regeneration. Maybe we we can use other terms, but uh, it's related to to that. Anyway, to present uh, the the project is. Uh, CIWA, I have to present first the CIWA platform, which is uh, a platform that was created in 2007. It's a kind of laboratory for experimentation uh, about Arab contemporary art. And we begin by, uh, when I say we, I mean all the team, and it began by... Uh, uh, first, uh, Yaguta Belgassam, uh, whom I joined directly, and then with Jean-Pierre Anne. And we began by going to the Arab world countries and meet with artists there and see what is happening uh, in, uh, in the society and uh, in uh, the uh, creative, uh, let's say, domain. But then we realized that we have to be uh, kind of present in there and work and create new means of, of working together uh, with uh, artists. Uh, so uh, let's to 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 clarify more the the, the way of working of Siwa. Uh, I should maybe mention that uh, all is related to the name of of uh, of Siwa. Siwa is a oasis in uh, Egypt, in uh, the desert of Egypt, near the frontier of Libya. Uh, it's the oasis where we can, uh, uh, where Alexander the Great met uh, the priest of Amon, where kind of two cultures met. And uh, for us, the, this concept of oasis is very important because it gives us uh, new ways of thinking and of experimenting uh, and new ways of inhabiting this world because as you all know uh, a oasis uh, as you see in the image this is a oasis uh, in uh, in Tunis in Tunisia in the south of Tunisia it's uh, near Edeyev, the city of Edeyev that I'm going to talk about in a few in a few moments um oasis is a spot where people live but it's a, a spot 
in the desert. It's surrounded by a desert, by devastation, by complete absence of life. And it's a spot where actually there is uh, water, but there is also human effort. There is no oasis that is actually natural. Uh, we know that all the oasis, since they appeared like uh, 3,000 years uh, before Christ, they were uh, maintained and constructed and built by human, by human beings. And it's a way to make a space livable in the desert. And uh, the, um, there are many techniques that are uh, used in the oasis, uh, which are very interesting for us. And uh, as Siwa as a platform for thinking and experimenting in art, but also in, uh, in uh, other uh, domains of life, on political level, on social level, it's uh, um, just to say to that our relationship to 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 the oasis is not just a, a metaphorical uh, relationship. It's also something very organic, very uh, solidly connected to the way of building and maintaining and living in a oasis. The way so to get back to the uh, oasis, oasis is. Um, first, a spot, a livable spot. It's uh, maintained by human effort, by uh, a social st structure, and it's all about sharing and uh, connecting to other places around and uh, elsewhere. Because the oasis, it's not like an island. It's uh, not like uh, some place which is completely um, uh, self-sufficient completely. It's a livable, a livable space related to uh, other spaces. It's a part of a network. Usually it existed because of the, uh, the tract and the, the ways of caravans in the desert. We can move to the other image, please. So, um, this is also a oasis called the Tamarza in the south of Tunisia. And it's near Redeyev, in the area where Redeyev exists. So uh, Siwa began to work in this way by establishing many, let's say, livable places in Arab world, livable uh, places uh, to make experiences, to create, and then to connect them with each other. Um, the, we worked in the beginning with the Iraqi, the Iraqi artists in Baghdad and in other countries like Morocco, like uh, yeah, Tunis in Tunisia. And then in uh, 2012, uh, we moved to Redegev. Uh, and let me see, just say just some uh, little bit of uh, uh, details about this uh, city. Redeyev is a town uh, in the southwest of uh, Tunisia. Can we see the in the map, please? Uh, yes. So you can see it's in the southwest of the Tun of Tunisia. It's in the desert. And it's in an area which is uh, known for the presence of phosphate. There are mines of phosphate there. And actually, uh, uh, we can uh, go to the caption number two, please. Yes. So, Edeyev, as you can see, is in the middle of the desert. And it's a, an, an a very uh, big mining area. Um, in the south of Adeyev, you can see like the the black uh, spots are oases there. It's Jared oasis, one of the biggest in the Sahara, in the Afri North African desert. Um, so uh, Adeyev is a city that was uh, built 
by the French colonizers because of the phosphate mines. It was kind of uh, built in order to bring workers who uh, were recruited from uh, other countries like Algeria and the Morocco, and also mostly uh, were recruited from the semi-nomadic tribes that were living around. So they settled in in Adyar. And uh, so we can understand. Can uh, can we pass to the next image, please? As you see, the what is written on the wall is al phosphat uh, in Arabic, which is the source of uh, life and also of all the problems of uh, the uh, people. Because as we know, the the people ha have their, mostly they worked in the mine, but also we know that the phosphate was a, a, a big source of health problems, of uh, 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 ecological problems in, in, in that city. Anyway, something very important happened in the day is uh, events of 2008. In 2008, there were a strike uh, that began in the company of Phosphat and then uh, it uh, generalized in all the, the city of Hedeyev. And it was a kind of precursor of the, let's say, all the uprising in 2000 and late 2010, beginning 2011, what we will call later the, the Tunisian or the Arab Spring. Um, in 2008, there were a lot of strikes in, in Hedeyev, and it was a new way of making strikes that were created there. It's like a precursor in the sense of it was coming from the base, from the people, from uh, students, young people, uh, jobless uh, young people, housewives who were in the street asking for economical change and social change also. And um, this was very important because it gave a kind of a tone or tonality to what will happen after that two years later uh, in the center of Tunisia. And that what actually make us pay attention to that region and go to that uh, region as CEO platform uh, in 2012 to meet the people of Hedeyev. First, uh, we just wanted to, to meet and to learn from them and then to propose to be part uh, of, uh, like of the network of CEO. Uh, can we uh, move to the uh, next image, please? And then in 2014, we, uh, let's say, occupied a building, uh, in, which is L'Economa in IDF. L'Economa is uh, the company store. That was the company store of the phosphate uh, company of IDF. Um, and it was closed in 1985. So we uh, kind of occupied it with the inhabitants of the city and we wanted to transform it into a center for uh, hospitality and for experimentation for the people of Adeyev. We can uh, move to the next uh, image, please. And uh, the tree next also, we can move and show them uh, uh, successively. Here you see uh, all the works that were done in, in, uh, in the building with the young people of, uh, of Adef, uh, uh helping us to, to transform this place into a livable place and a place for experimenting and for, uh, for also creating of the people. And then uh, we uh, began to search with the people there in Hedeyev for a new way of uh, organizing and uh, uh, to create some new ways. And I cannot say that uh, we have 
bought some models or something. The models had to be created there. And this was also a difficulty because uh, we didn't know what, how to proceed uh, in the beginning, but we had to discuss with the people of ATF and we began to uh, look in their past, in the way they used to organize this themselves as a types, as semi-nomadic types. We can see here all the team of, uh, of Siwa in ADF and with the people of ADF. And then, um, as uh, Gunna said also, uh, our problem was also, uh, one of our problematics was the financial independence and how to keep independent and so we can stay there for a long time. It's uh, a problematic that also related to the ways is the techniques, uh, how to be independent and how to keep living with limit, uh, limited resources or finite resources. So we um, tried to uh, create small project for the small inhabitant of the city within this life project like let's say a small restaurant for uh, uh, aisha who is a woman working with us in siwa DF in lekonoma she was living there she lost her job in uh, in uh, before and then we proposed to her to to have her uh, own smaller stand and then participate in in the in the budget of the building of Lekonoma. So it's kind of uh, creating a, a cycle of uh, auto generation, let's say, of uh, incomes and all this money that will get back that will get uh, into the. Uh, 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 the let's say the l'economa budget it will be used in some workshop that we can see in the photos next photo please here we see uh, in this photo and the next one a workshop about uh, jewelry making uh, with the women of fedeyev and then we can see here, uh, like for example, here is a, a workshop of uh, cinema editing, uh, also with the young people of Hedayev. Next image, please. Also, the cinema um, oh, workshop here. Here we see the theater workshop in which uh, for for the children. It was uh, very interesting also. And here we see a, uh, a workshop for theater in the desert surrounding uh, uh, Redeyev, Redeyev city with the people of Redeyev and uh, uh, with the presence of an artist with François Tanguy, his, who is a theater director and who was um, in a very good relations to the to the people of of ADF and actually he learned from them a lot um, yes and uh, here we see also the same in the same play here we invited in this photo we invited an Iraqi director Haytam Abdelazab who came to make a workshop with the, also the people of ADF and to present a play uh, can we move the, to the next image, please? A play that was presented in the place in front of L'Economa, in the center of Hedeyev. And uh, it was uh, about the democracy model in the Arab work. We can see here also some part of the, the theater play. And also there is a workshop of uh, music, of composing and music making and art music uh, that was um, possible to in in the building also here we see another workshop for painting um, with frescoes with an artist uh, Tunisian artist called Atef Matallah um, yeah and uh, here we see another 
in a workshop with uh, um, a storyteller. It's about storytelling and it's about to connect the people of ADF to their past and to their uh, stories. Yes. So, uh, just to, to, to say here to, and to, for finishing that this desert is part of uh, ADF and uh, the, the life is the ways, in the oasis is about to interact with this desert, which means that uh, it's not something that will, uh, um, we will uh, like uh, consider as an enemy, but it's something we interact with it in order to generate life from the devastation, from the devastation, from the desertification. And it's uh, very important to us to, to be in this interaction with uh, the desert as, uh, um, uh, as like, in order to finish, I would like to, to, to tell, to quote uh, a poet, a German poet, which is, uh, uh, who is uh, Hölderlin, who said, but where the danger is, also goes the saving power. Thank you. And maybe we can discuss about this more if you have any other question. If you have any question. Thank you, Arafat. It's amazing, really amazing to hear and see and learn from you and from uh, Gulnara and Murabek's work and experience. I think that the first, um, the first kind of thoughts that I have and some of the words that really resonated with me are words such as um, loss and hope and the difficulty of creating something new when it's not out of nothing Right? It's not an oasis of emptiness. It's creating actually on the, let's say, the, um, the pile of the past and its heaviness of, of everything that, um, you know, for example, that, um, um, let's say, the, the results and the impact, the impression that, um, that uh, Soviet uh, um, rule uh, left and uh, the same for you, Arafat. I mean, it's not an easy... Um, situation to build from and to, to create new. But in both your presentations on your experience, both of you are talking about and are determined uh, about doing the new, creating the new. And uh, creating the new not on your own, but creating the new with the community through workshops, through engaging everyone you know there's uh, one example you gave uh, Gulnara in the trash festival where an elderly woman is talking to a child and telling them you know be careful like don't uh, you know don't leave trash this is important and um, and you know can you maybe talk a bit more about the community work that you're engaged with and and for example with you Gulnara and Murat Beck you're talking about self-organizing and how artists are invited really to take responsibility and to um, to almost initiate these, not just the projects, but also the, the communication with the community um, of non-artists. Maybe you can talk a little bit about this, and then I also would like to, to go back to Arafat with a similar question. Mm -hmm. Maybe you say. Um. Thank you, Jumana, for this question because it's. All, I think it's also very. It's really very important uh, to sustain uh, any project. I mean, not really. I mean, I think maybe it's not really good work to to say the project, but maybe it's. It's uh, when artists start to communicate and to to create some. Uh, to, to engage some people together to do something towards changing some situation towards uh, rethinking and uh, regeneration uh, of some uh, uh, certain uh, situation in this, in the community or society it's always a big challenge uh, 
uh, how we can communicate with each other, how we can uh, uh, find solutions sometimes, because uh, it could be completely different interest it can and completely different uh, agendas. So it's um, for artists it's a big challenge uh, to to be some kind of mediator between people and to make some kind of research before uh, his because his uh, because before his or her um, intervention in some in some space or some community. So we have different we had different. Uh, experience about that sometimes not so good uh, when artists did, didn't really understand the situation or maybe uh, not really have some possibility to interact uh, better with people so um, <clears throat> we always try to to tell our students about responsibility with the people and with whom you are interact during your, your work. So it's I think it's it's uh, it's uh, it's always a, a challenge. And, and uh, um, for example, um, sometimes when we uh, when we uh, invite some artists, international artists, they need some deep uh, uh, understanding of the context. They need to uh, make some kind of research, not really not uh, um, do some some his their own project uh, just put on the new context their their ideas so it's uh, it's uh, very important to uh, also to explain them and to uh, to make this kind of dialogue uh, and bridge this is i think uh, the first step Yes, thank you so much. And Arafat, you spoke about, you used two powerful words, hospitality and experimentation. And I found this such, you know, such a beautiful two thoughts about regeneration. How can we, you know, uh, be hospitable and maybe also not just to ourselves, but also to the land, to earth, to water. And, uh, and at the same time, how could we allow that space for experimentation? <clears throat> yes, uh, hospitality is very, actually very important. It's kind of maybe, as you know, it's the basic of all the Arab ethics, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if we can uh, uh, think about Arab ethics or the way of living, which is the way of living in the desert, the fundamental thing is hospitality, is to be able to receive uh, and also to be able to, because receiving actually is giving life and maintaining life in this unhospitable milieu, which is the desert. And uh, uh, yes, uh, in relationship to the community, just to uh, get back to what um, uh, Moatbik just said, which is very important because uh, we had uh, this relationship to the community also uh, when we had also some di difficulties in order not to establish a relationship to the local community of Hedeya, for example, but to make sure that the artists who come, for example, to Edeyev understand the reality of that. Uh, because uh, we realized in the beginning that we learn more from them, from them than them learning from us or getting something from, uh, from, from us. They, uh, we learn more. And so the role of Siwa in, in a way became not to accompany them, not to uh, help them by any means, but just to be, to give a frame for themselves, for themselves, for the people of Hedayev to show us the new ways that they can, that they can give us from their past and from their own experience uh, that is very important also. Uh, 
So this uh, relationship to community is uh, based on uh, reciprocal hospitality. Actually, we needed that they receive us, uh, which they did, and uh, also we needed to receive them in all ways, in all ways possible, in, the, in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, resources, experiences, past, which makes possible a, a, a dialogue uh, between uh, us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to create that dialogue really requires time as well and, and trust. And I think this is something that I'm sure is, is very much interwoven with, uh, with your practice. And um, one of the things that I was thinking about as well when you were talking about the mining areas um, in Eredeev is, is, you know, how is it to really build new around this history, from out of this history and rebirth ourselves again beyond the colon colonizers um, remains and, and strategies, past, uh, past strategies. Exactly. Yeah. That's a very good question, actually. And Redeyev is a very good example because Redeyev as a, as a city, it was actually built and established by the colonizer. Uh, mm -hmm. And the people who were there, who established it there, are people, some in the from the tribe sound, who came and established to be part of this uh, company, to be part of this extraction of mine and this new link to the landscape, a new link to the environment and to uh, all what uh, the nature there and the desert. But at the same time, uh, we kind of, we, we thought about also how to get, uh, how to not be prisoner of this specific past of the city, how to uh, get some other resources that exist actually before colonization. It's uh, it's true that the colonization or the colonization trauma is very uh, uh, important and uh, determines the, the 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 being in the world of these people. But at the same time, um, if we get stuck into it, I think personally we will not get out of it. We have to find other resources for us to identify, for identification and for also ways to deal with the environment around that are not only uh, existing from this history, which is the history of colonization, but from other. And that's why, for example, the workshop with the storyteller uh, with the children in Redeyev was very important because uh, he is trying to share with uh, the, the kids of Redeyev some stories from uh, times, from the tribal times, some stories that can be appropriated in a new way, in a modern way, of course, and, uh, and be a resource for a new relationship to the environment. Yeah, thank you, uh, Gulnara, uh, and Arafat, for your uh, explanations. Uh, uh, the the lumbum, uh, the concept that we bring to Documenta 15 is so is actually we we conclude there are some failures. One of the failure that uh, those are the local anchor, humor, independence, uh, generosity, transparency, sufficiency, uh, and now it's regeneration. So my question is that uh, this uh, this lumbung, as I mentioned earlier uh, during the opening, that it can be a hardware like a like a, a, as a physical building. It, it's a, it's a place to store foods and also the resources that can be accessed in the future uh, by all the participants. But as a software, it's also a concept or an idea that uh, the idea of sharing resources. Um, uh, talking about regeneration, it means that. Uh, the idea uh, supposed to be always in there. People can come and go, but as an idea, as a concept, it's always it's always in there. My question is that is there 
is there a concept like uh, like lumbung in your in your in your context uh, both uh, Gulnara Muradbek and also to Arapa uh, can be like a word or any any concept that that also uh, uh, reflects this this these things uh, the similarity uh, of the lumbung Actually, our in Bishkek, uh, our artistic community is very small, and uh, we know each other and gathering in some events and uh, talking and uh, sharing our ideas through uh, in the round table, um, drinking cup of tea or something, <laughs> and. Um, uh, it is some kind of kettle of burning, uh, and uh, uh, we um, push each other to with these ideas. And I think it's uh, also gives for young generation some kind of uh, food for their uh, activity, and and also I think for regeneration of your own uh, thinking and own soul you have to be a little bit uh, be in some kind of out of all these uh, communities and uh, uh, little little bit di uh, make a distance from uh, and uh, be in uh, the silence in the moment and um, maybe our n a new project uh, that we are it is not new it is going maybe several years but it is very important and uh, i want to share with uh, you uh, maybe muradbek can read it's uh, uh gunara just taught talk about uh, our project of art residency which we are also creating in a remote village at, uh, in Kyrgyzstan and uh, it's also based on the idea of interaction with the local people and at the same time because of the um, this remoteness uh, um, we think uh, that um, regeneration this can be perceived as a very intimate a personal experience so um, for example just recently we came from this place and uh, we were together with international artists came from from the so united nice. states and she left uh, she stayed one night in our residency and uh, i just would like to to share your your letter if you let me know uh, to read this letter um, just a minute uh, a, a magical ev evening alone in this echo house a shrine a temple a church there are many words for sacred sites and this is one a powerful way to dream when sleeping on the loft lifted above the earth staring at the moon who gazes back at you and finally when you can no longer keep your eyes open to this uh, open the sun peaks its rays from the east at this moment maybe you remember that just like the moon the stars and the sun you are just another celestial body moving through the universe <laughs> any albagli from the united states so um this is uh oh sorry this is our residency small 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 place where you already can live so um talking talking about maybe talking about the uh, andan ask about the um, some words we can use as a as a lumbung Probably in Central Asia, we can use like Chaihana. I don't know whether Araf, Arafat uh, know about this Chaihana because Chaihana is a place where people 
can gather together and drink and have some tea together. Usually it's public place, but you know, every time when some artists come, came coming to our residency, they were amazed that we always have tea together with, in round table. The same was in our school when we gathered together with our uh, students. students. Always was some cup of tea together and it was like very informal situation when you can share your knowledge very freely and in very friendly atmosphere. I think China Hana, it's like a sort of metaphor which can we can also provide you to use like a metaphor for sharing knowledge. <clears throat> Hmm. Hmm. That's beautiful. And and so you, it's, you, it's, sorry, Antan, go ahead. Is in uh, which language it comes from uh, originally? Um, Chai, it means actually, I think from, from, from China came this word, or maybe from India. We don't really know. And Chai Hana, it's, I think it's a uh, place. It is some kind of the place. It yes. is the place for tea. Place for tea, yes. Or, or room for tea, but <laughs> mostly it is just the place. Maybe it's a little bit complicated. It's meaning more white. Is such a tea ceremony, is it open to new members? Uh, so not only the artists who are working together, but is it open to, for public to join you and to share the tea with you? And then I wonder if Arafat also has similar, uh, is aware of similar ones in Morocco or Tunisia? Uh, yes, of course. I was thinking when um, Andan was talking about Lumbung, about uh, uh, many uh, parallel uh, think, uh, things in Oasis uh, lifestyle, actually, because Oasis is uh, based on sharing one source, it's uh, water. So uh, all the society of Oasis is based, all the structure, the social uh, structure of the Oasis is based on how to share the water uh, between all the people uh, of the Oasis. And also how to stock it, how to store the water, because sometimes in some Oasis, the water they have only comes from uh, rain, which is like three days in the year, or from uh, some river that uh, flows only some time of the year. And that's also all the, the techniques of uh, Oasis are based on how to store and share water. And there are many words for that, uh, that are very important in the Oasis life, which is Fugara, for example, and uh, Khota, for example, which is uh, uh, underground reserves for water and also that are used for later for the share in the water between all the people in uh, uh, in the oasis um, and uh, also uh, what we call but it's more existing in uh, the oasis in the Arabian uh, desert and also in Maghreb uh, what we call uh, the Qanat which is like to uh, they dig a, a canal inside the mountain with a very a well a very 200 or 200 or 300 kilometers until the canal comes to the oasis and then there is all a system of of uh, sharing it also and uh, uh, Moatbek was talking about Shaihana or this place for tea that reminded me all the si tribal system in, uh, in, uh, in the Arab cultures and Berber cultures. Uh, for example, uh, in Morocco or in, uh, in Tunisia also there are some what we could call Jma'a, which is like the, the think maybe in uh, German or the, the assembly of the, the, the tribe. And also, uh, what uh, you call also, I think, uh, and then here in uh, 
in uh, related to Lombung and then Dokumenta, the Majlis, which we call also Majlis mm-hmm. for making decisions also in the tribe, uh, and uh, where everybody sits together and we drink tea, of course, and or coffee, mm-hmm. and we exchange all the opinions and uh, all the uh, the decisions we that we make together in in the tribe it's a very interesting system actually because it's based on this discussion and uh, trying to convince each other more than voting in a formal way but it's really based on a, an ethic of listening and giving time to each other uh, to express and to say their words. Uh, but Arafat and Ajumana, maybe you can also uh, elaborate this uh, more on the Majlis word that you just mentioned, Arafat. Since Majlis coming from the word Jalasa, Jalasa Yajlis Majlis, uh, you sit, uh, sit sitting, but in the Majlis, it doesn't have to be like someone has to sit to participate uh, the Majlis. It, it can stand or it can whatever whatever the the, the activity is as long as it, it's part of the it's part of the people gathering and then discussing something to find any solutions or just commenting and then give uh, any any advice or whatever to 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 to, to find a solution yeah i think yeah. Uh, sorry no please go ahead out of five uh, I think Majlis, uh, you're right, uh, and then it comes from Jalasa, which means to sit, but it's more related not to the posture of uh, the posture of sitting, but more to take time to be together. It's the Majlis, it's related to the space, but also to the time, to have a time to listen to each other and not do something else, but it's just uh, uh, a space and time where we are dialoguing and uh, listening to each other. And this time is very important. It's even more important than the posture itself. We can be, of course, standing up or, or sitting or laying even, but we have the time to listen to each other. Yes, I think that this is very much connected even with the idea of regeneration, how to be together, the being together, the listening to each other, very much connected with regeneration um, as well. So, I, and then if you didn't have a question, I also wanted to ask about, um, you know, how challenging it can be to, um, for public support, like within the concept of regeneration and trying to create new and to be together and in times where you know public support is sometimes not um, as eligible um, or doesn't you know freely come as, as easily as it it did or perhaps it didn't before, but you know how do you find ways to work around those challenges within regeneration? How do you invite public support or how do you regenerate resources in this uh, in this particular situation? It's a question for all of all of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what? Well, we should we should okay. ask, we should say. Um, mm-hmm. I think that was uh, it's a very important question for us. We begin to um, uh, to feel that problematic in our work actually, and at certain moment we begin to think about the challenge of how to sustain uh, the efforts of uh, uh, this uh, enterprise uh, which is uh, uh, which means for us which meant for us how to get an independence for uh, uh, resources which means how to regenerate our resources also and how to make something that will make us able to uh, have our resources and that's how we begin to think about creating with the money we get from uh, foundations or like uh, 
or from let's say European Union, for example, how to make with that money something that generates itself, not in a, a capitalistic way, of course, but in a way that uh, how to create with the people of IDF something that will generate the money for them, for the people of IDF and for the economy, for this project. And we begin by uh, uh, creating a small project, like with the people, uh, with some young people, for example, we uh, create, like we gave money to uh, a, a guy from EDF to have his own uh, transporter motorcycle, a tricycle transporting, and uh, who generates some money for himself, for his life, and uh, also a part of this money will go to the to the Lekonoma. And then another project was uh, also uh, a small restaurant for a woman who also, like uh, like uh, this uh, young uh, guy, will give a part of the money, the income to Lekonoma. And with all this income for Lekonoma, we can uh, or the people of IDF are able to decide for cultural project, for uh, inviting some people to learn about uh, uh, oasis or permaculture techniques. And uh, yes, it's, it's one solution. We are trying to find other solution, but it's very important for us that this project uh, generates its uh, own income from the income of the people of the city. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Arafat. Um, it's always challenging for, challenging for, for artists to sustain, and uh, I think it's everywhere in the world. And uh, when we work with our students, uh, it, we also try to um, make them to support each other, to, 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 to be more friendly and to, to, um, to help each other. I think it's very important, especially last year during this COVID time. You know, it's always, everybody was separated and uh, many of uh, People have their health problems and uh, health problems of their uh, relatives or parents and so on of themselves. So I remember that uh, uh, many of our students, former students, have this kind of crowdfunding to support each other. And this is also very important, I think, because uh, because um, we have not a lot of. Uh, funds or donors who uh, support uh, contemporary art or art and culture in Kyrgyzstan and uh, unfortunately government also uh, don't really pay attention to uh, to contemporary art and have no any leg have no any policy about that and uh, it's remind me Mm, uh, the metaphor which Arafat said about the networking b between oasises, because uh, all these uh, small group and communities uh, of contemporary culture in Kyrgyzstan they ha and also in Central Asia, they have this kind of networking. And I think it's very important also, mm, not only sharing knowledge, but also some, sometimes uh, to help each other uh, monitor it. Um, we can also say about one interesting project also uh, during the COVID time last year when uh, it was uh, impossible to, uh, for, to move uh, anywhere for, for artists and anybody in, in Central Asia. Um, some artists start to create uh, online, online bazaar directly in, on Facebook. So this kind of uh, group of online bazaar, it's, it's very uh, friendly, very democratic, uh, and at the same time very uh, low prices, not so low, no, but it's fixed prices. Uh, uh, um, bazaar, where can, you can sell, artists can sell uh, some artworks. 
So, uh, but at the same time, for example, if you sell three artworks, you should buy one artwork from another artist. So, it, so it's, this kind of policy was in this uh, in this uh, online bazaar. So it's uh, I think this kind of uh, initiatives are very important when uh, uh, when it's, it's uh, getting some kind of uh, difficulties and difficult time. Artists try to to create something new, some to, to try to find some solution. Um, Thank talking you, talking about yeah 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 mm -hmm. that's all I I, I finished yeah. mm. wow uh, okay so yeah, it's been an hour and a half we've been conversing about the the idea or the the word of regeneration uh, and then yeah since Arafat mentioned the uh, majlis is a time and space to listen to each other so I think they it's also like uh, we did a small majlis here and then uh, I, I hope you have enjoyed today's conversation. I would like to thank our guests uh, Gunara Kasmalieva and Muradbek Jumali and Arafat Sadala and my co-host Jumana Emil Abu. I also would like to express a special thanks to Undin Schaefer who has been interpreting in international sign language. Uh, I would like to thank all the Documenta 15 team uh, that I cannot mention all the names because it will be a long list. Uh, but especially the team behind this Lumbung calling who has been uh, working hard to prepare this seventh edition from April uh, to this year. Uh, we, Wang Rupa and Documenta 15, would like to thank to Andrea Linenkol, Chiara Yanaselli, Verena Borman, Michelle Weber, Larissa Hiltenhain, Carolina Kuber, Leon Schneen Wien, and Theresa Franke. My sincere appreciation, gratitude, and thanks to Chiara Yanaselli and Michelle Weber, Jumana Emil Abu, and Undine Schaefer. I would like to thank you all for your attention and for asking such relevant questions. Please note, in case you have missed some part of this live conversation, or if you'd like to share this video, it will be online very soon with subtitles also added. Please check our website and social media channels for the next events that will be happening in the near future. Thank you so much for your attention for the Lumbu calling since April 2001 till this October 2001. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you everyone. Tahun 2000, tahun harapan yang penuh tantangan dan